the United States is no stranger to powerful hurricanes making landfall. Time and time again, we witness these storms cover regions with heavy rains and winds. When hurricanes are expected, emergency management and leadership officials usually encourage residents in the path of a hurricane to evacuate. Yet we still see people stay behind. Understanding the decision to not evacuate is complex. And this episode of DRC It will break it down. To understand why people don't evacuate, let's first look at family and individual characteristics. Homeowners are less likely to leave because they are more worried about protecting their property. Marginalized residents in a community, that is those without access to the same resources as others, might not be able to evacuate. Without money, transportation, support networks, or access to emergency information, their choices may be limited. When presented with the option to evacuate, males are less likely to evacuate than females. This may be related to cultural gender roles. Large families tend not to evacuate due to cost, but families with small children are more likely to evacuate. Pet owners may not evacuate because they don't know where pets are accepted and because of the cost. Receiving warning information is crucial to the evacuation decision. Warnings can and should come from many sources, such as social media, television, radio, text alerts, and directly from public officials. If an individual or family doesn't receive consistent, credible, and timely warnings, then they are less likely to evacuate. When a hurricane is on the way, one of the first things people do is check with friends, family, or neighbors to see whether or not they plan to evacuate. For most people, the evacuation decisions of friends and family will influence their decisions. If their friends and family are not leaving, they might not either. Another thing people look at is the storm itself. The lower the hurricane category, the less likely they are to leave. Did you know, hurricane category only refers to wind speed and does not include either storm surge or rainfall. When educating the public, emergency managers should communicate all three. Did you know storm surge is the number one killer associated with hurricanes? Hurricane Katrina made landfall as a category three, yet became one of the deadliest and costliest hurricanes, not due to wind, but due to historic storm surge and levee failure. Hurricane Florence made landfall as a category one, but it was flooding from 30 inches of rain that was the greatest threat. Flooding can happen inland, not just in coastal areas. So remember, hurricane category is important, but it doesn't tell us the entire story. Also, pay attention to both storm surge and rainfall. Risk perception is highly personalized and plays an important role in the evacuation decision-making process. This is particularly true when we are talking about the safety and sturdiness of a home. Homes perceived as safe and sturdy provide a sense of security so people are less likely to evacuate. Location is another important factor. The further people live from large bodies of water, the less they perceive the risk of flooding. Therefore, they are less likely to evacuate. However, keep in mind that perception doesn't always match reality. No matter the size of the hurricane or the number of warnings received, there are other factors that prevent individuals and families from evacuating. Some factors are outside of people's control, such as traffic or the high cost associated with evacuating. Concerns about traffic congestion and the risk of being stuck during landfall discourage people from evacuating. Deciding to evacuate may be difficult or even impossible if a household lacks the resources to do so, particularly regarding funding for gas, lodging, and food for an unknown period of time. Evacuating may even reduce the income for a household because they evacuate instead of going to work. People, particularly homeowners, might fear widespread looting and stay behind, even though such criminal behavior has consistently been shown to be very rare and the risks associated with the storm are much greater. Do people who have previously evacuated from a hurricane evacuate in future events? Not necessarily. That being said, the research does lean more or less towards the conclusion that if an individual has not evacuated in the past, he or she will likely not evacuate in the future. As you can see, the evacuation decision-making process is filled with complexity. So, after all this, 
you might be wondering what you can do. Consider the following tips. 1. Plan ways to address the barriers we've discussed here that keep people from being able to evacuate. 2. It takes time for people to decide what they want to do. Messages should go out as soon as there is a credible threat, and that information should be continuously communicated from that point on. 3. People often need to hear the message multiple times and in multiple ways. Use as many channels, sources, and languages as possible. 4. Tell people about the risk, what they should do to protect themselves, and who to ask if they need help. 5. Consistently coordinate communication from official sources to avoid confusion. 6. Build relationships and trust with communities before an event. 7. Remind people to reach out to loved ones as well as those in their communities who might need help. We hope you've learned something from this episode of DRC It and use it to make informed decisions.